Hi everybody, this is Dave from Bricks of the Dead and today I wanted to do a brief tutorial to show you guys how to do uh, something I actually get requested about quite a bit and that's dialogue balloons in the comic. Uh, so I've got just a simple picture I'm going to be using and we're going to lay out a dialogue balloon like I do in the comic just to kind of show you uh, every step that it takes. So we're doing this in Photoshop CS4. Uh, it's an outdated version. It should work in any Photoshop, it should work you know, pretty similarly in GIMP and other programs like that. So once we have our image that we want to add dialog to, uh, the first thing we need to do is select the text tool. Um, so we need to hit T on the keyboard or we can click the icon over here. And now we'll want to select somewhere on the page, it doesn't matter where because we can move it, and type out whatever the dialogue is going to be. So in this case we're going to be adding dialogue to the creeper and we're just going to add his kind of signature hiss. Um, so there it is. So we've got the text tool now. Uh, what we're going to want to do is go back up to the cursor tool so that we can reposition this so it's a little bit closer to him. You want to have your dialogue you know, at least fairly close to the character that's saying it. So we can move it around a little bit here. You can either move it with the mouse or with the arrow keys on the keyboard. And if you want to move it around a little bit bigger chunks with the keyboard, if you hold the shift key, that'll move it 10 pixels at a time, which is uh, kind of a handy little tip. At any rate, now that we've added our dialogue, we've moved it sort of into place where we want it, you know, roughly, we might have to adjust it a little bit. Uh, you'll notice over in our layers menu that we now have two layers. We have the background, which is the image itself, and then there's a text layer. Uh, so now we're going to add another layer to the equation. That's going to be the bubble itself that the dialogue is going to go into. So on the toolbar, we have the shapes um, tool, excuse me, the shapes tool. And if we hold down the cursor there, we see if you have a few different options, a rectangle, rounded re rectangle, etc, etc. You can make your dialogue balloon whatever you want it to be. I prefer to use the rounded rectangle. Uh, and I'll select that and you'll notice the options up here will change. Uh, I have the radius set at just 10 pixels, just kind of a nice simple radius. You can make it more severe, you can make it less severe, what, whatever your, your choice is. So we select that and then we're going to draw just a box around the dialogue. And you want to make sure that you leave sort of ample room around all sides so that there's nice generous margins and makes it easy to read. First thing you notice when you lay out the box, it's going to jump ahead of the text. So it's on top of it, you can't read the text underneath it. So you can do a couple things here. If you go back over to your layers panel and you select the text, you can click and drag it up and it'll show back up here. Or if you undo it, uh, we can also select the um, shape layer that we just made and drag it below the text. Or if we want to be clever about it, and before we add the tool at all, if we select the background layer here instead of the text layer, and then we add our dialog box, what it does whenever it adds a new layer is it adds it above the layer that's currently selected. So if we've had the background layer selected, it puts it in between the background and the text layer, and it just sort of makes it easier to you know, lay out. It, it, it's more visual. So now we've got the balloon shape. Uh, which is simple enough and well, again we might have to go back to the cursor tool and kinda you know massage it around a little bit to get it in the place we want. The next thing we need to do is the tail and there's a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, I like to have sort of a, a sloping tail I just think it looks nicer but you can do it uh, however you like and to do the tail I use the pen tool. When you select the pen tool you want to make sure that the shape layers box is selected here. Otherwise, you're just going to be able to draw an outline. You want to be able to make a new shape. Um, and essentially, all you do is you're going to add three points to your drawing. So the first point is where it's going to start, right here. You add the point, nothing really happens. Uh, when you add the next point, that's when things are going to start coming together. So this is where you want to sort of make it pointing to the character's mouth. So we're going to put it right down here. And I'm going to click and hold and you'll notice a line appears and now I can drag my mouse around wherever and that's going to affect the way the line is drawn on the page so we can have a really exaggerated curve, we can have a real gentle one however we want to do it um, but once we have it roughly where we want it we can let off the cursor and it starts to draw that shape and it's just I don't worry about this white box here because we're gonna move that around Next, we want to draw our next shape, and that's going to be up here. 
uh, to kind of carry the tail back around. Uh, so I'm just going to click up here where I want it. I don't need to drag. And then the shape's going to get really crazy. And you'll probably think at this point, you know, we screwed something up, but this is exactly what we want. And all we need to do is just kind of drag this and rearrange it so it turns into a proper tail. And to do that, you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and you go to the end of this little tail that's coming up and the pen icon is going to turn into a little chevron just like that and with the alt key held down click this and now you can drag this around just like we did before and you can make it into whatever kind of shape you want so again we're going to make it just sort of a simple dialogue balloon shape just like that let off the alt key and we're going to put uh, one more point just back at the beginning that's going to close the loop and we now have our tail drawn so the dialogue balloon right now is in two different parts it's the background part and it's the tail part so what we want to do is we want to merge them together so what you can do is hold the shift key and then on your layers panel just select both layers when they're both selected right click and go down to merge layers and now they're a single layer uh, what that is also going to do is going to rasterize the image. So before it was a vector image, you could drag stuff around. It would kind of keep uh, you know, everything exactly the same. But now it's a bitmapped image like a photograph. Um, so you want to make sure you get everything kind of in place before you rasterize it. But uh, as you can see, it's pretty easy to put together. So if you do screw something up, it's simple enough to just delete it and start over. So right here we have a very, very simple dialogue balloon. It's there's not much to it so we want to add just a little bit of flair to make it stand out a little bit more from the background and look a little bit nicer so if we go over to our shape 2 and we double click we're gonna open up the layer style menu and here we have a lot of different options that we can add to the layer so just kinda of going down here if we wanted to add a drop shadow we click this and it's gonna add a drop shadow and then we can go in and we can tweak all of the different settings in here so by default it's gonna add 75% uh, opacity door drop shadow which is a little much so we're gonna drop that down to 50 just to make it you know a little a little less severe uh, and then I think I'll add a bevel and again it makes it a pretty severe bevel so I'm gonna pop this down to about 75 just to make it smaller I'm gonna pop the size down to about 3 and then I'm gonna add five pixels of softening and that's just gonna make the effect a little bit more subtle make it look nicer and then finally I think I'm also going to add a little bit of stroke to it and that's just the outline around it you know by default it's gonna add three pixels of stroke which is a little thick in this case I'm gonna knock that down to two and instead of having it black I think I'm gonna go for a sort of a nice dark gray color just so it blends into the background a little bit more it's not quite as you know a hard line drawn out from the background and we hit OK and there is our dialog box it's got a little bit more definition character to it another thing I always like to do to my dialog boxes is I always like to drop the fill opacity a little bit so when you have shapes like this you have a master opacity and a fill opacity so if you drop the master opacity let's say 50 percent the whole thing gets lighter and you can see through it pop that back up to 100% and if you do the fill opacity let's say down to 50% it keeps the same opacity to the outline but the the fill of the shape is a little bit more see-through and I think that helps a little bit with the definition 50% uh, is a little much so I usually do you know between 80 and 90% and that just kinda softens the image a little bit makes it sort of blend into the background a little bit better and then once we have that we can kinda move our things around make sure everything fits where we want it to and we're done we've created a nice quick and easy dialogue balloon and you can do this you know as many different ways if, as you want so if we delete this and we want maybe a square box instead there's a square box and let's say instead of a curving line we want to do sort of a, a lightning bolt line so if we just go back to our pen tool uh, we'll just draw a little bit different shape and we can add you know the same sort of effects I'll just do the basic ones to it 
and and it looks the same. So you can you can use this same basic set of techniques to draw all sorts of different dialogue bl balloons. You can make them different colors, different opacities, different shapes. Uh, you can do you know thought balloons and make little you know round circles. However you want. So uh, that's the way I do it for Bricks of the Dead. If you've got uh, questions or comments, be sure to let me know. And again, if you find uh, this helpful, uh, please like it, share it, do all that fun stuff. Uh, so this has been Dave from Bricks of the Dead, and thank you for watching.